Hello, I'm Seamus Dunhu of EVE University, and this is episode 3 of How to Survive EVE Online. For reference, it's been approximately 12 hours since I filmed the previous episode. Starting with this episode, I'm going to have you do certain things on a regular basis as you, whenever you log in. First off... Skill training completed. Skill training completed. Let's click on this. So these are the skills that I've trained since I last logged in. Or since I log last logged out, more precisely. So, Industry 1, Mining Frigate 1, Target Management 3, Energy Grid Upgrades 2, Amar Frigate 3, Survey 3. Uh, so the first thing you should always do is check the status of your still skill training queue. And I still have at least two days worth of skills uh, set up. Uh, is there anything that's more important that I want to slot in? Uh, I'll say Mining Frigate Level 3. Just because. No particular reason. You know what? Mining level 3. Also just because. Other things can wait for the moment, I suppose. Uh, one of the things I forgot to explain about skills, skills generally do one of two things. Either they're a prerequisite for a ship, a module, or another skill, or they cause your ships and modules to perform better. Sometimes they do both. So the repair system skill, which we needed at level 1 to make use of... to make use of our small armor repairer 1, uh, that's a prerequisite. Uh, but the repair system skill itself also reduces the cycle time of these repair modules. So they'll operate faster the higher levels we have these trained to. So I'm going to slot in repair systems level 2 here. So that's one of the first thing you should always check the stat status of your skill training queue. The second is check the status of your medical clone. I have 89,000 skill points. And I have a clone grade alpha, which will cover 900,000 skill points, so that's fine. The third thing you should check is Neocom, Corporation, or Neocom, Eve Menu, Social, Corporation, The Wars tab, The Our Wars sub-tab. Right now you're flying around in high security space. This is a 0 0.9 system. 0 0.5 and up is high security. If anybody shoots at you unprovoked in high security space, the Concord police are going to tap them on the shoulder with fire and brimstone. This may not necessarily happen fast enough to save your ship, but the aggressors will be destroyed. So you're usually not going to be attacked by other players in high security space, unless they somehow have some sort of legal right to shoot at you. Uh, player corporations and alliances can pay Concord a bribe so that they can declare war on each other. NPC corporations such as P Imperial Academy are immune to this sort of thing. So as long as you're in your starting NPC school corporation or any NPC corporation not related to factional warfare, uh, you should never see any wars being listed here. Uh, but once you do join a player corporation or alliance, you're going to want to pay attention to this whenever you log in. And the last thing you want to check that I can think of is for any Eve mails or notifications that you've received. Depending upon how, many co how much contact you have with other players, this part will either be completely empty or you're going to be spending the next hour if you're, say, you're the director of a large player corporation. Depends on the situation. So, with that out of the way, uh, let's actually continue along on the business chain, just for a couple of steps. Uh, and what the agent wants us to do is go out, shoot some rats, and he also wants us to salvage some kind of a container. So he'll give us a module for that purpose. Uh, so, oh, since there's going to be combat, we should probably look into getting 
uh, more weapons for our ship. Uh, we don't need a probe launcher anymore, so I'm going to mouse over the probe launcher, and there's a series of buttons here. Uh, there's an arrow to remove the charge, and another arrow to remove the module. I'm clicking on the arrow to remove the module, which also removes the charge along with it. So that frees up the slot. Uh, we need weapons. And you know what? Let's see if we can get any gap on these Gatling pulse lasers that we were originally given. Let me view the market details. A uh, little bit pricey here in Dipari, but uh, they're close at hand. I don't have to go out for jumps to Amar to get something less expensive. Uh, by the way, the reason I chose Imperial Academy uh, for this series... Skill training completed. Ah, Electronic Upgrades Level 1. The reason I chose Imperial Academy for this series is because it's in the same region as the Amar Solar System. Uh, the home of the Amar Empire. And the Amara Solar System is the second largest trade hub in all of EVE Online. The biggest trade hub being Jita over in Kaldari space. So a lot of players buy and sell stuff in Amar. Uh, you cannot see prices outside your current region. So if you're not in the domain region or you're not in a region with a big trade hub like Jita, Amar, Dodixi, or Renz or something like that, uh, you might need to travel to another region to double-check prices. Uh, so if you're based in Hedian University, or I'm forgetting what the other schools are, uh, you might be seeing elevated prices, because players who play the market know that you cannot see prices outside your current region. In Domain, it's a little harder to jack up the prices really high, uh, because you have Amar conveniently close by in the same region uh, to compare prices against. Uh, but anyway, I am going to get uh, two more Gatling Pulse Lasers. And let's see. Let me show info on my Frequency Crystal. Multi-Frequency S. View Market Details. And buy a couple of these. Alright. Alright. Unload my weapon first. Drag in my two frequency. <clears throat> my true two lasers. Shift, left click, and drag the second laser onto the first. Third laser onto the second. And let's drag these multi frequency crystals into a single stack and then drag them all onto the ship. There we go. Done. Um, these lasers. And the armor repairer use capacitor energy, and the capacitor display up here indicates a delta negative 4.1 gigajoules per second. Capacitor and shields recharge over time, uh, but not at the same constant rate. When they're 25% full, that's when they recharge the fastest, but even then there's a limit to how fast they can recharge, and according to the fitting window, I would be using capacitor energy at a much faster rate than I can actually generate it. It would probably help if I were not using s data and relic analyzers at the same time, since those use a little less capacitor energy, but that doesn't help, but taking those off doesn't help the situation much. Uh, as long as I don't keep my modules running all the time, I should be fine. Let me close this. Alright, so the agent, let's accept this mission, and I completely forgot that the civilian salvager is a high slot module, so I can't use three lasers with this. Ah, the absent-minded Professor Donahue. Alright, now that that's properly set up. Alright, let me regroup my weapons. Shift, left click, and drag. Left click and drag, left click and drag. There we go. Undock. Right click, encounter warp to location. Warp drive active. And I can close my cargo hold for this.
warp drive active. And the tutorial window threw a couple of skill books at me. I should probably have done that in station. I mean, it's not a huge problem unless my ship gets blown up, in which case my cargo might be vaporized with the rest of my ship. Anyway, I am approaching the target. And let me actually control left click the civilian transport ship wreck since we need to do something with that as well. Uh, let me mouse over my weapons. 2,500 meters. I gotta remember that distance. And F1 to start shooting. And it explodes. Control space bar. Um, this wreck icon, as soon as it will stop moving, this one, this wreck icon is solid rather than empty. Which means if we open cargo, there's stuff inside. Not particularly expensive, it's just metal scraps, but let's loot it. And you know what? It would be easier if we could see Rex on Overview. So, I'm going to right-click, add Rex to Overview. Boom! That's convenient. Now I'm going to go to... I'm going to go to this uh, four lines icon, the menu icon. Uh, it might look like a white box to you. Uh, save current type selection as... And call this Seamus Default. By the way, this brings me to a good point. You can change your overview settings. So if you go to Open Overview Settings, and let's make this a bigger window, you can change uh, what sorts of things show up in your overview. Uh, so you can show certain things, hide other things. Uh, you can even right-click a, a folder and select or deselect the entire folder. That way, if you want to hide, if you want to show all entities, you don't have to click on all 87 things. You can just right-click, select all. Um, you can change uh, the appearance of the icons, uh, well, at least the appearance of the color tags attached to the overview, as well as any colored backgrounds that appear on your overview. Uh, I, have a separate I have a separate video on the EVE University Overview Setup Guide, although that one may be a little out of date. Uh, I'll talk more about the overview probably in an episode separate from the series, but just be aware you can reconfigure your overview. Uh, and you know what? I should have been running my civilian salvager while I was flapping my jaw. Thankfully, I got lucky, and I accessed it on the first try. Sometimes you might go through several failed cycles before it finally opens up. Salvagers are not like the data or relic analyzers. Not any more, at any rate. The salvager will just cycle and cycle and cycle until it succeeds. Let's loot all and go back to the station. And something else that I forgot to check on was to see if I met the prerequisites for any skill books that I couldn't inject yet. So I right-click, show info, uh, salvaging is missing mechanics 3. You know what, let me take out Mining Frigate 3, I will put Mechanics 3, and it's right before Mining. And click Apply. Alright. Now let me... Oh, by the way, to select multiple items, you can left-click one item, and then control left click other items, let go of control, and then drag them down into your item hanger. Uh, can I inject archaeology? Yes. So let me inject that skill. Can I inject hacking? No. Uh, let me go back to my skill training queue. 
scanning, and you know what, I'll put archaeology here. Alright. Survey. I... Have I already injected this? Yes, I've already trained survey and cannot train it a second time. Alright. Talk to the agent. And... Let's see. Complete the mission. And he gives us a venture mining frigate as a reward. Let's request the next mission. And here he wants us to go to a particular location, uh, mine some ore, uh, reprocess some of it into titanium, and bring it back. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Mine some ore, bring it back, reprocess it into titanium, and then hand it over to the agent. Uh, let's click accept. And he will give us a civilian mining laser uh, to help us run that mission. And the game will throw text at you about how reprocessing works. Alright. So let's close this. Uh, the Venture. I, I suggest using the Tormentor even if you've finished the Mining Frigate skill. Because this particular mission, besides having you mine an asteroid ore, there will also be hostiles to shoot at. So... go and undock by the way I'm using hotkeys to open and close the fitting window all the time again the default is alt F or on a Macintosh option F uh, balancing the books warp to location warp drive active. It's worth noting that this particular mission has an associated location with it. So location 0 0.9 Depari, which means the mission wants you to go to someplace specific and do something there. You may have noticed that if you right-click an empty space, there are a list of asteroid belts. Depari has four of them. There are different numbers of asteroid belts for each solar system. Uh, all right. So in case you don't happen to see the asteroid that you want to mine, one of the things you can do is right-click your default tab, add tab, let's call it uh, utility, because well, I call it utility because sometimes I use it for things other than mining. Left-click the utility tab, uh, right-click the utility tab, and load... Hold on, sorry. You gotta click this thing and load default mining. There's asteroid Veldspar. Let's target lock that. And then tap F3 to turn on our mining laser. Assuming you put your mining laser in the third slot. If you put it in the first slot, you would hit F1 for your mining laser. Now what the mining laser does is that every 60 seconds it will take asteroid ore out of that asteroid and put it in your cargo hold. Uh, the Tormentor doesn't have a whole lot of cargo space, only about 130 cubic meters or so, and this mining laser will pull out 33 cubic meters per minute. So this cargo hold will fill up in about mm, four minutes or so. Of course, there are hostels that are supposed to show up. Let's see if I can make them show up faster if I just keep turning on and off the mining laser repeatedly. Sometimes hostels can show up while mining uh, because of the activation of a mining laser. It won't happen randomly in 0 0.9 and 1.0 space, but it can happen randomly in 0 0.8 space and below. And here we have a target. Oh, by the way, I made sure to click on this thing and have the spinning triangles going in circles around it. If you try to click on the asteroid and turn on your weapons lasers, it will ask if you want to proceed with this dangerous act. And the correct answer here is no. Click on the actual target, then shoot. 
And with the destruction of that hostile, this is now a green check mark, so we don't need to worry about this particular asteroid anymore. Uh, let's right click the wreck and open cargo. Much more convenient having the wreck in the overview. Sometimes you want wrecks in your overview, sometimes you don't. Let's see. Now, the agent wants 333 Tritanium. If memory serves, you're probably going to be able to get 200. At your starting skills, you're probably going to get around 200 Tritanium for every 100 Veldspar. So you've got plenty of Veldspar at the moment. Uh, so let's stop the mining laser and return to station. Walk drive. And I keep forgetting to warp to my cuddle bookmark Docking rather than warping requested. to the station itself. So you're going to drag in the metal scraps, you're going to drag in the Veldspar. Uh, right click the Veldspar and reprocess. And this will give you 1389 Tritanium. Uh, so let's click the reprocess button and close. You can also reprocess the metal scraps. So that'll also give you Tritanium. And let's close this. Let's talk to the agent. Everything is green check marks, so we're going to complete the mission. And it gives us the reprocessing skill book. Go ahead and right click, train that now to level one. Let's set this aside for the moment. There's a reason I want you to switch over to the industry chain now. So let's start a conversation with the career agent, or with the industry agent. And. This agent also wants us to go to a particular location and do some mining. And he'll give us another mining laser for that. I don't expect any combat this time, so let's just accept the mission. And we can actually use a real mining frigate this time. So let me grab my civilian miner off of here. Uh, shift, left click and drag. Right click, stack all, drag this on. Okay, I'm done with my tormentor. Right click the venture, assemble ship. Right click the venture again, change the name, venture, because the name of the ship shows up on directional scanners. And let's right click the venture and make active. A minor one pulls 40 cubic meters per minute. A civilian miner pulls 30 cubic meters per minute. Uh, so the miner one is actually better. Let's see if we can get another miner one here. Indeed we can. Reasonable price as well. Only a slight markup compared to Amar. I'm gonna buy this. So drag in one, two mining lasers, and just in case something goes wrong, I'll have a civilian armor repairer. Not it's a not very it's not a very good module, but I don't expect too much to go wrong. And close the fitting window. And let's undock. Making mountains and molehills warp to location. Again, this is a mission that expects you to go to a certain location. So you have location 0 0.9 Depari. So you don't want to just go to any of the regular old celestial asteroid belts. Uh, you want to go to some place. You want to go to some place specific for this mission. Uh, let me get rid of the tutorial text here. Uh, utility. There's my asteroid. And turn on my mining lasers. Now, the mining, the venture mining frigate, if we show info on our ship for a moment and look at the traits tab, uh, 5% bonus to mining yield for every level of the mining frigate bonus. 
There's also a reduction to gas cloud harvesting duration, but you're not likely to be using gas cloud harvesters uh, this early on in playing EVE Online. There's also a roll bonus that doubles the, mi the mining laser's yield. Uh, it's also got a pl two pl plus two bonus to ship workhorse strength, which I will explain most likely in the advanced military chain. Uh, but basically, this doubles the effectiveness of your mining lasers. So these two mining lasers are acting as though there were four. Besides wit, uh, and besides the mining frigate skill, you've also got the mining skill itself. Uh, let's see, resource processing. You've also got the mining skill itself, which is also a 5% bonus to mining turret yield per skill level. So this skill is giving you a 1.1 multiplier. You have mining frigate level 1, so that's giving you a 1.05 multiplier. And then the roll bonus is doubling, uh, giving you a times 2 multiplier. So these mining laser 1s, which are normally 40 cubic meters per minute, for my venture at my current skills, 40 times 2 times 1.05 times 1.1 is 92.4. These tooltips are rounding off 92 cubic meters per 60 seconds. Now, you may notice that your cargo hold is not filling up. The reason is the Venture has a specialized cargo bay for this. It has an ore hold. Hold on, let me make this the same size as the standard cargo bay. I'm going to merge this in with the cargo bay window and then split it out again. There we go. So... It's got a 5,000 cubic meter cargo bay that can only hold asteroid ores. You can't put other stuff in here, just asteroid ores. So as your mining lasers are operating on your venture, this is where the asteroid ore is going. So you can mine and fill up your sh uh, venture until you've got 5,000 cubic meters of ore, and if you happen to be mining for your own personal profit, you can then take the ore back to station, dump it off, come back, and do more mining. You may hear about a technique called jet can mining, uh, which, let me demonstrate that. Shift, left click, and drag. I need a small sample to do this with. I would right click and jettison, and that creates a cargo container next to me. And if I open that uh, container, that's a cargo container floating in space. Jet cans can hold 27,500 cubic meters of anything. Uh, and as your ship is mining, you can shove asteroid ore into that. And what used to be done in the past is that players would just jettison their ore and shove additional asteroid ore into the uh, jettisoned canister or jet can. And then they would take their frigate back to station, get out their, uh, uh, their industrial a ship with a big cargo carrying capacity, and they come here and move the ore out in huge chunks. That was back when the idea of a mining frigate was a racial frigate with mining bonuses, but only a 300-400 cubic meter cargo hold. You couldn't hold a lot of stuff in a frigate. The Venture is relatively new. It was introduced about a year or two ago, so you don't need to do jet can mining anymore. So I don't advise it. Uh, now, given my notes, I believe ultimately over the course of the industry and business chains, you're going to need roughly 10, 11,000 tritanium or so. Uh, so I advise grabbing a about 5,000 or 6,000 Veldspar or such, plus whatever you need for this mission. So, six or 7,000 Veldspar. Which I've already accumulated while flapping my jaw, so we're done here. Let's dock at station. Right click, cuddle, warp to zero. Warp drive active. 
Remember, your agent wants 1,000 units of raw Veldspar, not reprocessed into anything. If you reprocess all of your Veldspar, you cannot complete the mission, and you're going to need to go out and get more Veldspar. By the way, the specific requirements of this mission are that you have done SOME mining at this particular location, and that you somehow acquire a thousand unit that you somehow acquire a thousand units of Veldspar. So if your asteroid runs out at your mining location, you can always get Veldspar from elsewhere. You can even right-click Veldspar icon and view market details and buy more Veldspar off the market if you want to. But Veldspar is very common. You find that almost literally everywhere. So I, I wouldn't bother with buying Veldspar. Uh, so let's talk to the agent. Complete the mission. He'll give you an, uh, an extra copy of Industry, which you no longer need anymore. Let's request the next mission. Uh, he wants you to obtain 150 Tritanium. And this time, he doesn't care where you get it from. Because there's no mission location uh, link here. There's no location Dipari, or location Arbaz, or location any of that. There's only two things here. What he wants you to get, and where he wants you to take it to. And he wants you to take it to right here. Coincidentally enough, you have 150 Tritanium already. Uh, so let's just accept. And complete the mission. Request the next mission. And here was where we start to learn about, ban about manufacturing. He wants you to make two civilian afterburners. Which is a special module type can find them on the market, but they only occur, they're only useful for the tutorial missions. The civilian afterburners are on the market for extremely jacked up prices, so I don't advise buying civilian afterburners off, off the market. Um, actual honest to goodness afterburners, one mega newton afterburner ones, are much cheaper than this, strangely enough. So you always want to check the prices of things. But anyway, we're going to accept. Let's close the agent window. We can show info on this blueprint. And the time, it takes five minutes uh, to make an afterburner, a civilian afterburner. And he wants us to make two of these, so this is going to take roughly ten minutes. Minus whatever time reductions you get from skills. Each civilian afterburner is going to take 64 tritanium. We have more than 128 tritanium. So let's right click, use the blueprint. Right click, there we go. Sometime, Creus is relatively new, sometimes there will be bugs. Uh, job runs, two, start. This is going to take nine minutes. It's a background process. You don't need to babysit it. While that's going on, let's go back and talk to the business agent again. And let me get rid of this text. And the business agent wants us to use a civilian data analyzer on something. So we're going to go back to our impair... Um, Why did I name this thing Imperer? Because I'm being silly. It's a tormentor. It doesn't really matter what you want to name your ship. You could have an Imperer named Tormentor or a Tormentor named Imperer. You're allowed to do that. But I don't know why I named this thing Imperer. It's really a Tormentor. But anyway. Uh, so we're going to open the fitting window. We need the civilian data analyzer. And let's click Accept, and Close. We've seen this text before. Balancing the books, warp to location. Warp drive active.
warp drive active. Alright, approach the data storage device. Let's target lock both these things since we need to do that. You know what, we need to be within two and a half kilometers of this target to be able to, to have a good chance at hitting it. And I'm going to start shooting him just to get his attention and convince him to come closer. Because once I make him angry, he's going to want to get within re weapons range. Alright. And he's dead. Double left click the wreck, loot everything, and let's run our civilian data analyst. It might help if I had brought the correct type of analyzer. I'll skip ahead to the part where I come back with the correct module this time. Alright, I have now come back with the correct module this time. So let's hack it. That's the firewall. There's the system core. Got lucky with the layout this time. And let's loot everything and return to station. Warp drive active. All right. Now, even without the mix-up of having brought the wrong module, hope, uh, hopefully that uh, manufacturing job should have finished while you were out on this other mission. Station, click dock. Docking station requested. Docking request accepted. And let's see. Let's talk to the business agent. Everything here is green check marks, so we're going to complete mission. And request the next mission. And this is a long range courier mission. Uh, let's go to Neocom Industry, the Jobs tab, and our civilian afterburners are ready, so let's click Deliver. And let's refresh the conversation with the industry agent. Everything is green check marks, so complete the mission. Uh, by the way, make sure you do these missions uh, quickly enough because the bonus rewards will give you more ISK than you would otherwise get if you started a mission and then logged off and then came back to finish it tomorrow. Uh, because if you do, if you delay that long, the bonus period will end and you won't get all that extra ISK. Starting off, you're going to need all the interstellar credits you can get. Uh, let's talk to the industry agent again, and this is also a long-range career. No, I'm sorry. Uh, he wants 7,000 tritanium. Destroy some rogue drones, mine some feldspar, refine it, get some tritanium. Uh, so let's accept that mission. And close. And in this particular case, the rogue drones will already be there when we arrive, so we don't need to coax them out with mining lasers. So, making mountains of molehills, encounter, warp to location. Warp drive active. By the way, you may have noticed that these personal locations have stuck around, even the data, gas, and relic sites, which are probably not there anymore. Uh, those are points in space that you can use to run and hide to, at least for a moment. If hostile players are trying to chase you down, whether it's high security, low security, null security, they can try to find you using combat probes, which uses exactly the same sort of um, combat mechanics as uh, the same sort of scanning mechanics as the core probes. 
but a core probe will not find player ships. You need combat probes for that purpose. But still, having random points, empty points in space to run and hide to can be useful for at least half a minute. So you might want to start collecting such random points in space. Alright, the rogue drones are dead. Which means, as far as the mission is concerned, we're done with this particular location. How we get 7,000 Tritanium is completely at our discretion, but there are asteroids here if we want to mine them. Uh, let me right-click one of these wrecks and call it a safe spot. And let me return to station. Warp drive active. And here on the solar system map, here are the various random points that we've collected so far. So the safe spot I just created, and the various training sites that used to exist. Now they're empty space. I have a separate video about bookmarks, and I will direct you to that video for the value of safe Docking spots. Now, we actually need Tritanium. Uh, we have about 1,200. We need another 5,800 or so. Uh, let's... Here, let me make the item hanger a little bigger. Let's shift, left, click, and drag the Veldspar into the same container, and let's split out about 3,000 Veldspar. And let's uh, reprocess that. And that will give us another 6,000 tr Tritanium which gives us enough to hand over to the agent. So let's talk to the agent. Everything's green check marks. We're gonna complete the mission. He'll give you the Afterburner skill book. Right click on that, train now to level one. Let's request the next mission. Um, and let's also request the mission from the business agent. These are both uh, career missions. So let's accept both of them. And let's open our ship's cargo hold. Let's empty out what we don't need. We're moving a crate of electronic parts, and we are moving an encoded data chip. So I'm going to right-click Kehor, set destination, right-click Pedal, add waypoint, uh, and because I want you to also go on a shopping trip to Amar to buy stuff, because you're going to find it useful, uh, let's see, what's a, a least expensive cap recharges here? Sometimes the fancier, sometimes the slightly fancier versions of modules are cheaper than the basic tech one, occasionally. I have a separate video on what are called meta levels. I'll direct you to that video for what these fancy versions are all about. Um, but here, let me grab a supply of five of these cap rechargers. and some of these capacitor power relays. Remember when I said how certain modules will not operate if you don't have enough capacitor energy? These modules that I'm having you buy will help with that situation. So let's right click Amar 8 Oris Emperor Family Academy, add waypoint. And let's close all this. And let's open up the star map. And let's zoom in with the mouse wheel, and this is what our route looks like like now, right now. Kind of goes all over the place. So we're going to click the A button. We're going to optimize the route. There we go. And it's going to have us go to Kehor first, 
Amar second, and then Petal third. And what we're finally going to do, find Depari 2 Imperial Academy, right click and add waypoint, and we will come back here. Let's close the star map, and let's undock. As it turns out this time, it's going to be a 19 jump route. So I'm not going to bore you with the entire trip. You know how to jump through Stargates. You know how to find yellow Stargates on your map. The only complication here is that uh, you have multiple waypoints now. And if you're in a solar system that happens to have connections to uh, several different solar systems that are all on your route because you're going back and forth all over the place, you're going to have multiple yellow Stargates. Whenever you're confused, refer to your route panel up here and mouse over the leftmost icon. So I'm jumping into Arbaz right now. Let's warp to Shaven. You mouse over the leftmost icon, the next jump in your route is Shaven. So that's the Stargate that you look for in case you have multiple yellow Stargates. So Depari is yellow and Shaven is yellow because they're both solar systems on my route. But for the purposes of getting things done, you want to go to Shaven, not Depari. You're going to return to Depari later. As you dock in each state, in each station, you will talk to the given agent. Don't worry if you accidentally start a conversation with the wrong agent. If it's the wrong agent, you won't see all green check marks. Just talk to the other agent instead. That's perfectly fine. Uh, I'm supposed to go to Ashab. Drive right. So as you dock in each station, talk to the agents, and if it's not all green check marks, talk to the other agent, and turn in the mission, and then undock and keep going. When you get to Amar, uh, you will transfer the modules uh, that I uh, advised you to purchase. Uh, you will slot some of them into your mid and low slots and the extras you will put in your cargo hold. And actually, while we are running around, there's one other thing I want you to get. Uh, Kehor, Kehor, okay, good. Warp drive active. We're gonna get better lasers. Which I forgot to check to see if they were in Depari or not, but they'll probably be cheaper in Amar anyway, as long as we're headed over there. The small focused beams. Small focused a focal seems to be least expensive. Yeah, let's grab the a focals. And we are just so that we have extras on hand, we'll purchase five of those. You've been getting a lot of isk from your tutorial missions, at least compared to the 5,000 isk that you started off with, so you should be able to afford this. All right. So at this point, uh, you should know what to do, so I will not bore you any further. In the next episode, we will get started on the remainder of the business and industry chains. Thank you for watching.